Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bronwyn and I am a skincare specialist by trade here on YouTube with eight plus years of career experience both in field and here on YouTube as a passion. In today's video, it's actually inspired by James Walsh's video that I saw him do where it's ranking specific brands of skincare from best to worst and I don't normally do these kind of comparison videos but I found this really fun and a great way to quickly learn about brands based on my personal experience with every single one of them or just my overall thoughts of the brand even if I haven't tried it out before but I wanted to do a little bit of a twist today this version of it is the Korean skincare version of it because if you know me and if you've been following me for a long time You know, I specialize more so in Korean skincare rather than Western skincare Not only because Korean skincare is something I've been more familiar with and interested in for many years And also is where most of my experience is in both professionally and passionately But it also is just like leading in skincare and I honestly in my opinion the Western skincare market pales in comparison to how advanced Korean skincare is and a lot of Western brands that are now hopping on the trends of like hyaluronic acid and niacinamide are honestly like 10 years behind on Korean skincare. Like I remember eight years ago I was using products from Innisfree that were high in hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, brightening agents and it's just it's 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 funny to see. So if you haven't already converted to the Korean skincare industry, this is your sign to maybe consider it. Anyway, without further ado, let's just hop right into the video. So I compiled a list of Korean skincare brands that I feel have been kind of the most talked about over the years and are kind of more of the most well-known brands out there. And I am going to kind of categorize them into areas that I feel rank them from the best in my personal opinion and the worst in my personal opinion. Now, of course, your experience with each brand or opinion on each brand may vary and be completely different than my own. But again, this is just my personal ranking of these brands and how I feel about them, whether I've tried them or not. So let's begin. All right, so I have this list here right beside me and this list kind of shows you just a brief ranking of how I feel about each product. At the top here, we have Lay It On Me. So this would be considered the top, best of the best in skincare that I would be thrilled to be using or get a new product from and just use it immediately. Second, we have Yeah, Why Not, which is like those instances where you have the product per se or you have an opportunity to get a product at a great rate, but you're not necessarily obsessed with it, but it's not necessarily a bad product. You just really like it, but it's not something that you're gonna be absolutely obsessed about and feel like you need to have your hands on it. You need to be using this product every single day. So you can kind of go with it or without it, but it's still overall a great product or brand to use. The next on the list is It's Okay. So this is an instance where you may have it in your collection already and you use it from time to time, the brand, but you don't really feel excited about it. You don't really see drastic results when you use the product, but you still use it from time to time because it gets the job done to a degree. So it's not necessarily gonna be your favorite, but you'll still use it occasionally, or if you can get your hands on it for a decent price and you're like, eh, why not? Next is give it away. So these are the products that for some reason you may have in your collection. Maybe you got a gift set of it. Maybe it was a free trial from a purchase that you did, or maybe somebody gifted it to you, but it's just not a brand that you really like. It's not a brand that works at all for your skin. So it's not necessarily a bad brand, but nothing about it really screams to your soul you're not really excited to use it and it, it gets the job done but again you could care less whether you have it or you don't have it so these are the products that you're going to give away to your friends and someone who would value it more so or donate it and the final category at the end is hands or feet. This is those products that really just don't work for you, brands that really don't work for you. For some reason you own products from them and you really don't wanna use them on your face. They're just overall like brands that don't align with your beliefs or really 
like crappy formulations or your skin just hates the brand whatsoever so you end up using it as hand creams or body creams so that you're not being wasteful you're still using the product if you have it but overall you're going to keep that stuff off your face it's just a no-go the first product i have on the list is dear claire's or claire's cosmetics this one i feel a lot of people might think i am actually quite biased to because i actually used to work for the company claire's for six years both in south korea and outside of South Korea. I did a lot of their digital marketing. I did a lot of their uh, skincare specialist customer service. I did a lot of back-end admin work for them. And um, yeah, I reviewed a lot of their products in turn because it was really easy for me to get them like really easy. Um, so although it might come across as I might be a little bit biased towards the Dear Claris brand, I'm actually not. Um, this brand, however, I am going to categorize it as lay it on me not because not because i'm biased whatsoever to them but simply because their products work and match their branding and what i mean by that is their branding says it's simple but enough that's kind of their their catchphrase that's their slogan and that's exactly what the brand delivers and that's why i love the brand and have been using them by choice for so many years not because i could get them easily in the past but i continue to purchase them even as an ex-employee to the company because it always works for me like without fail if i need to just like bring it back to basics start using a more simple skincare line that's still going to deliver me a ton of hydration a ton of moisture soothing care for the skin and overall deep internal care for the skin claire's always delivers that to me it's a staple in my skincare routine i'm always using at least one of their products in my routine and they never fail me they really just never fail me now there's probably over the course of like Claire's lifetime been maybe one or two products that didn't really do it for me. I think one of them to this day that I never really enjoyed was their foaming cleanser. I just, it really wasn't anything for me. It felt kind of like pointless, but like other than that, every single product really worked well for me. And it's a brand I, I swear by, I believe in. And I feel like the success that they have to this day is well-deserved. And I'm glad I could be a part of the company while they grew and helped them achieve the success that they did because they really are a brand that's a great introductory brand into the Korean skincare industry. They're really accessible to a global market. They're super English friendly and they make Korean skincare easy to start with tons of guides online with their YouTube channel. They really are a great introductory brand to the Korean skincare world. <laughs> the next brand we have on the list is Coserex. And again, not I didn't work directly with this brand when I was living in Korea, but I was working for Wish Trend at the time in Korea when this brand launched. And I think we were one of the first online stores to start selling Coserex before anywhere else to a global market. Um, so I remember like nobody knew about Coserex and I was so excited for this brand to come out because it was, I think this brand was actually around before Decem existed. And this was the first brand I've ever seen in in my skincare experience back then, we're talking like seven, six, seven years ago, where they were just single ingredient driven. So they would list their ingredient, their main feature ingredient on the packaging of the label and just have like additional ingredients in the formulation to make it a formulation. But overall the products were very heavily single ingredient focused and really just making it easy to understand ingredients and how they benefit the skin. It really a functional beauty cosmetic product and I really, I really just love their skincare. I think if you haven't given Coserex a shot and you love functional ingredient driven skincare products and you're looking for a Korean alternative to Desem the Ordinary, because to be honest, Desem the Ordinary's formulations kind of suck. Although they're functional and of course they get the job done, overall formulation is kind of lackluster. There's a lot of filmy issues. They feel kind of slimy and thick on the skin. They leave almost a coating on the skin. They pill when you add additional skincare products into your routine and I feel like if you're if you want to step beyond to some the ordinary and you also want to step your foot into the Korean skincare industry Coserex is your go-to they are so functional they're so ingredient focused and they were kind of the trendsetters in that regard especially from Korean skincare standards so lay it on me 
is definitely another one for that category. They really are an amazing brand and I feel like everyone should know about them. They also became really viral in the acne fighting community. That's where I think they blew up with their acne fighting products such as their BHA blackhead power liquid and their AHA whitehead power liquid really made them global all-stars. Next on the list for Korean skincare is Tony Molly and I don't know you guys like I never was one to like Tony Molly and I think from a standpoint that comes from more of a marketing and branding direction their branding has always been really catered to teenagers and with that I feel a lot of their skincare also translates that a lot of really simple formulations a lot of formulations that revolve around like fruits and vegetables and for me like it just was very very simple and lackluster especially from a Korean skincare standpoint I thought you could do better especially as representing like a korean skincare company but one thing i wish tony moly would do is kind of rebrand themselves they keep targeting these teenagers and really youthful demographics with these simple simple skincare products that are so fruit and vegetable and toy looking almost but then tony moly almost has this secret line to them this secret brand within itself that is advanced skincare and one of my favorite anti-aging snail mucin products i've used to this day is actually from the brand tony molly which is surprising because i've always been under this impression for the longest time that tony molly really is just childish korean skincare it's like very for young people but then like i said they have this secret like brand within them that's like tony molly anti-aging category where it's more advanced skincare and better formulations so with that being said tony molly is kind of like a it's kind of, it's, it's okay, you know, I'm not going to go out of my way to purchase Tony Molly, but I'm also going to be excited if I get my hands on one of their, like, anti-aging skincare lines, because they're actually really good. It's just that whole branding really doesn't appeal to me. The packaging looks very really cheap to me. The, it's a very simple skincare that is almost like, why are you putting all these, like, fruit extracts and and fragrances in there that really are unnecessary and kind of ruining your brand when you have the potential to deliver such good anti-aging formulated skincare products that you just kind of like lay back on the back burner you know so if i got my hands on tony moly and specifically their anti-aging care lines i'd be really excited but i'm not going to go out of my way to shop tony moly on my own and another brand that fits into that category for me actually no this might this might even this might even be worse you guys etude house is our next korean skincare brand in the lineup and etude house for me has always been a toy skincare line and i never understood the hype that so many people would give etude house their packaging just very childish um very dollhouse very kid inspired very again similar to tony molly catering to more of a teenager demographic and with that etude house has always been very heavy in fragrance they have a signature smell that goes alongside not only all their cosmetics which i love don't get me wrong i love etude house makeup i hate etude house skincare and it's the first ever Korean skincare product I used in my life was Etude House's AC line. We're talking like almost 10 years ago now. And this was when I was really starting to get into like my career as a skincare specialist. I was starting to work for companies in Canada before I traveled anywhere and I wanted to step my foot into the Korean skincare market and Etude House was kind of one of those easily accessible brands at that time there really weren't many brands out there that were catering to an English demographic so it was somewhat easier to get your hands on these products at that time and I remember purchasing them from Yes Style which is a great website where you can get a lot of Korean cosmetics and other Asian cosmetics and beauty and fashion um, and just I never finished it. I never even got halfway through one of their products. It just really didn't do anything for my acne. It didn't do anything for my skin. My skin was still irritated, inflamed. I had a lot of breakouts and it really just did nothing. And that has kind of been consistent throughout my experiences with their skincare products. I've 
I've tried so many samples from them because when I lived in Korea, I would often go buy makeup and cosmetics from their stores because it's so cheap and so good quality. And when you buy a certain amount of makeup at a Korean store in person, they give you kind of a goodie bag depending on the value that you hit or the amount of money that you spend there. And these goodie bags are amazing. Like you get so much free product, you get like medium sized like samples. And I have tried and sampled a lot of their skincare products and just really the fragrance is so strong very like almost like floral powdery scented with a hint of sweet and just never did anything for my skin it just really was kind of it felt pointless and meaningless for me to be using their products so with that being said if i did get my hands on a Tude house products I gotta say hands and feet you guys like I just it's pointless on my face really and the fragrance is just so strong that it's I feel like I'm taking a risk when I use any of their products for having like an allergic reaction it's just there's so many better brands out there that if you're if you're using a Tude House it's almost like you might as well be using a regular western drugstore skincare product like Nivea you know Next on the list, we have Innisfree. If you guys have been following me for a long time, you'll know I am a huge fan of Innisfree. Innisfree, similar to Tony Molly in Etude House, is a Korean road shop skincare brand and cosmetic brand, which focuses their branding more so, more so to the young working adult woman. So you kind of step away from that teenager branding and you get more serious about the ingredients, you get more serious about where the ingredients are being sourced from, where the packaging is sourced from, uh, reusing and repurposing the packaging. So they actually have a campaign within Korea where you can bring your empty skincare bottles back to the store and they will reuse them. They'll send them and reprocess them and um, just be really environmentally friendly as much as they can be. And Honestly, they come out with some of the most amazing, affordable Korean skincare products that actually get the job done. Um, and that's one thing that I love about Innisfree is their affordability and for the quality that you're getting. You can really have a killer anti-aging, functional skincare routine that's going to repair your skin, fight against acne, fight against dehydration, dryness, irritation, oil even. And they even have men's skincare lines as well that just is always so good. Like... I'm never disappointed in an Innisfree skincare product. Like I've, I've used so many of their products and I've always been so satisfied with what I'm getting out of it. No, that's a lie. I think there was one time, one product I used and it was their like pimple spot treatments when I had really bad acne when I was living in Korea and they just, they didn't really do anything for my acne. And that's pretty much it, honestly. Like otherwise everything else is always like a killer product. Just amazing awesome ingredients too. Innisfree, from what I remember when I was living in Korea, was one of the only brands I was personally aware of at the time that had entire product lines dedicated to niacinamide and the brightening effects that niacinamide has on the skin. And, and yes, niacinamide does have brightening effects on the skin. You may not think of it as an exfoliant because it doesn't directly exfoliate the skin, but it stimulates your skin cells natural turnover rate, which results in faster skin shedding, which results in brightening effects on the skin, which is why niacinamide is actually so popular in Korean cosmetics and has been for the past decade because of that gentle, natural stimulation to exfoliate the skin and brighten the skin overall. So with that being said, lay it on me is definitely where Innisfree is getting categorized. It is a holy grail all-time favorite brand of mine that never fails me. The next brand we have on the list is one that bothers me so much. It is Misha. Misha was a viral global product specifically for their BB creams. We're talking 10 years ago when, when the global market was starting to get introduced to BB creams. Misha kind of was that first Korean BB cream to influence the North American market. So a lot of brands that were coming out with BB creams way back in the day were inspired by Misha. And I just, I never really got it. You know, I used their BB cream before. It was so heavy. It had like a white cast on the skin. But aside from their cosmetics that I personally really dislike, their skincare just is so 
hit and miss for me. I think the only product I tried from Misha that I actually really enjoyed was their Time Revolution series. Everything else in Misha skincare wise is just really lackluster, a little overpriced, not really many results, and the fragrance is so sketchy. It's a very, very heavy kind of powdery, perfumey floral scent that reminds you of your grandmother's fragrance. This brand is definitely a more affordable luxury line catered to older demographics in South Korea. I feel like you don't really see many people talking about Misha nowadays because there's so many other brands that have been launched or that keep up with the times and like, you know, adjust their product to match the changing industry. I feel like Misha just kind of still a little stuck in the past when it comes to their branding and their product formulations. That heavy, heavy fragrance is a real no for me. And just their their products just lackluster. The only thing that ever really was worth it in my books was their original Time Revolution Night Serum, which actually made my skin look really glowy and amazing. And it didn't have too much of that fragrance, but otherwise since then, like I've tried a few of their products and it's just been a hard no for me. Like no, little to no results with a little bit of irritation from that heavy perfume fragrance so for me Misha is definitely a give it away actually no it's an it's okay because if I did if I did get given or if I did purchase anything from them it would be that single time revolution serum um, but anything else it would be a hard no give it away because someone else might enjoy it but for me there's a few factors that really put me off from the brand Another one that's very similar for me is Laneige or Laneige, however you want to say it. This is one of the most, like the original Korean skincare brands that went kind of global viral in the early days of the Korean skincare industry going viral and just Korea in general going viral. Laneige just never did it for me. I feel like their branding really just revolves around this single concept of hydrating and kind of mid-luxury skincare, it's very overpriced in my opinion for what you're getting. You're, you're essentially just getting repeatedly super hydrating products and that's it. Nothing about their product launches excites me. It's all kind of, oh, so it's the same thing, just kind of rebranded or formulated slightly differently. There really has never been anything in there that screamed, I need to have this. And it's just, I just feel like they're still stuck in that time frame of when they were really popular like 10 years ago and went viral, but they haven't really expanded from there. And it's a little bit sad to see, but for me with Laneige, I would give it away. It just, it's, there's, I feel like there's better products out there at better price points that are contis consistently having innovative formulations and Laneige just kind of stays, stays where it is. The next brand that we have is Dr. Jart. Dr. Jart is another oldie from Korean skincare brands. Dr. Jart is probably one of the second Korea famous skincare phase brands. This is kind of after Misha and the Laneige phase of popularity. Dr. Jart really just was the first, in my opinion, global dermatologist branded Korean brands. So it's not necessarily a dermatologist brand, but it has that marketing behind it to make you believe this product is dermatological. You know, it's it's from estheticians, it's formulated by dermatologists, which isn't exactly true. But again, this is a product that doesn't scream to me that I need it. Over my time of testing Dr. Jart products a few years ago, I never really fell in love with anything except for one line that they carry. And that is their <laughs> Ceramidine line. There has only ever been one line from Dr. Jart that I just needed to have and actually repurchased. And that was their entire Ceramidine line. Dr. Jart was kind of the introducer of ceramides into the Korean skincare market to make it more popular. And here in North America, we've always had brands like Elizabeth Arden that catered to ceramides. But in Korea, it never really was a trendy viral ingredient. Like you would find it mixed into formulations, but it never was a focused product of any 
products from specific brands. But with Dr. Jart, they, they're kind of the ones who were like, ceramides are it, ceramides are it for dry winter skin. If your skin's like flaking, cracking, if you're starting to see the signs of aging, you need ceramides. And here is an entire line of products specifically focusing on a ton of ceramides in our formula. And that did it for me. Like that was the brand that really helped my skin in the winter when it was dry. And I still believe in those products and love them. But everything else from Dr. Jart was just kind of like meh, you know, and it just really, it's okay. It's okay. Overall brand wise, it's okay. I love that specific product line though. Sarah Medine, if you have really dry skin, give it a go. Next we have CNP. And personally for me, I haven't I don't think I've used any CNP products, but similar to Dr. Jart, I just, it's another one of those dermatologist, esthetician inspired, branded, marketed products that isn't necessarily a dermatologist line, but it gives the impression that it is recommended by medical professionals. And with this one specifically, I've, I've, tried to purchase it on few occasions because of the overall like hype in Korea and the hype overseas. And I just look at the ingredients list and I see the price tag and I'm just like, so why should I purchase this over something else where I can get the same ingredients, same formulation or better formulation at a cheaper cost? You know, you're almost paying for that branding and marketing. And for that, I don't love CNP. Mind you, like I said, I've never, I can't recall trying any of their products directly on my face, but like, it just, it doesn't do it for me. It's not a brand I want to purchase it. Like if they came to me to review them, I would probably do it just to like give a review. And after that, I probably wouldn't, I don't know. Like it's not something I want to spend my own money on and it's not something that makes me excited. So CNP goes into give it away. If I ever got gifted products from CNP, I probably would just say it's not for me, honestly. But then again, it's a little bit hard to say because I haven't personally tried an entire product from their brand on my face. So if you have, let me know what your thoughts are. Next on the list, we have I'm From. And again, when I was working back in South Korea, I was the front line for this brand launch on a global market. So this product wasn't being sold overseas yet. We were the first uh, global e-commerce store to get our hands on this product and to distribute them overseas. I remember their first ever product they came out with was their honey mask. And that was it. That's all they had was a honey mask. And I was stoked about this product. I was telling all my friends online about it. I got all my friends living in Korea and Japan hooked on this brand. It really was an amazing natural based, sustainably sourced skincare brand from South Korea with South Korean formulations that I was so excited about and that was so good. And to this day, they've now launched quite a few different products in their branding, but they're always very, very slow to release things and very limited. And I feel like they do that because they really take sourcing their ingredients and having a very strong natural ingredient driven product they take it really seriously. And that's what I love about the brand. Every single product I've tried from them, I've loved except for their volcanic clay mask, but that's only because I don't really have super oily skin and it was kind of useless for me. But otherwise, every single product I've tried from them has been just a pleasure to use and really nice. So, hmm. I wouldn't necessarily say lay it on me. We're gonna say, yeah, why not to I'm From because a lot of their products are face masks and wash off face masks. They are of course expanding out of that industry or not that industry, but that category and starting to come out with serums and creams, which I'm so happy about. But the creams in themselves don't aren't always game changers in my routine. It's more so their masks that do it for me, which are amazing and their serums, but their creams, I feel like they could improve on a little bit, but their serums and masks are so transforming to your skin. So we're gonna say, yeah, why not? Because if I have an I'm From product in my skincare routine or on my shelf, I'm gonna use it no matter what, but like, I'm not always gonna be in love with it, especially if it's a cream, you know what I mean? Next, we have one that's a little bit more of a newer, I believe this is a Korean skincare product, but 
correct me if I'm wrong, if it's not a Korean skincare brand, this is VT Cosmetics. And they are kind of new in my dictionary of Korean skincare brands. They, I only recently tried out their products a year ago and I fell in love with their products. So, so nice. Like their SPF, their Sika line in specific and their Hapropolis line, so good. Like their sleeping masks just like are the best I've ever used to be honest. Like I always wake up dewy, glowing, super hydrated. And their SPF was just like my go-to SPF all, all this year. And I'm almost out of their SPF and I got it in the late spring last year. It really like lay it on me with <laughs> VT Cosmetics. I haven't tried everything from their line, but like I'm sure I would love it as well. They do have a fragrance to most of their products, but it hasn't been irritating whatsoever. It's more of like a like a soft, fresh scent that's really just gentle and non-irritating for me, like just wonderful. Next on the list, we have Buy Wish Trend. And since you guys now know, if you didn't already know, I did work for Wish Trend for six years, both in South Korea and overseas. Um, Buy Wish Trend is not actually one that I am biased to, similar to Dear Claire's. Um, like, I understand it's Wish Trend's house product that they formulate and create and manufacture themselves. And what I love about the branding is that they created this brand to deliver the desires of their customers. So the customers would always come to Wish Trend asking for help, advice on skincare, and they took that data of what people were asking for and needed help with the most and created products to cater to those needs in their customers, which is genius and obviously really, really smart to do. But the thing is like, a lot of the products just don't do it for me. And with the entire By Wish Trend line, I think the only products that I've actually personally enjoyed from them was their Propolis line, specifically their By Wish Trend Polyphenol and Propolis Serum. I love it in the winter time. And their Quad Active Duo, no, Quad Active Boosting Essence, I love. But otherwise, the rest of the products I've gotten from their By Wish Trend line have just been like, like, okay, you know, like not, like, yeah, why not? You know, like they're not bad. It's just not every product is something that I need or enjoy, but I do not have any problem with them. You know, like I've never broken out from a Buy West Trend product. I've never gotten irritation from them, but I don't enjoy the use of every single product that they have in their, in their brand range. So for that, it gets categorized in, yeah, why not? The next brand that we have on the list is one that I... This is belief, and if you guys know belief, a lot of people uh, get confused and think it's actually a Western European skincare brand, but that's not true. It's actually a Korean brand. They have a heavy marketing um, directive to kind of target a global market. So even though they are strong and have a high presence in South Korea, I feel like they almost have a higher presence in North America because I feel like their branding is very Western. And with that, it's also super overpriced in my opinion. There's been a few times where I've actually wanted to buy a Belief product because of the hype that it's been getting in like America. And I've just, I've gone to the store, I've swatched it, I've looked at the ingredients, I see the $56 price tag on a jar of cream like this big and I say, but why? Why is it that expensive? There are so many amazing, again, like some of these brands, there are so many amazing competitor Korean skincare brands out there that deliver more without such a heavy price tag. And for that, I just, I can't personally give in to belief and purchase belief on my own regard because I don't believe in that, that price tag. And the formulations are just very extremely hydrating or extremely moisturizing or green tea is in it. It's just like, so what else are you going to give me? You know, for, for $56, you better be giving more me more than green tea, hyaluronic acid and shea butter, you know? So it's, it's a very, I would probably give it away. I would, I, it's still like most Korean skincare products. I feel like it's too good for the hands and the feet but at the same time, it's not for me, so I'd give it to someone who would appreciate it more for sure. 
The next brands that we have in the lineup is one that's a little bit newer to my skincare brand dictionary, and that is the brand Some By Me. And I recently bought a few products from their line because they actually seem very interesting to me. Their branding kind of caters to, you know, that young working adult. So you're still into kind of more trendy ingredients, but you want stuff that's actually going to be functional and ingredient driven, which is what mostly caught my eye is the ingredient drivenness of it. So think of Coasterex and think of Decem the Ordinary and the Inky List. These are brands that focus on ingredients. So the, the title of their product is going to be listing the ingredients that are the key main players in that product that are, you're going to see results from. And their products revolve around that concept, which is something that I really like in my skincare. I like to, I like for it to be in my face. I like to know what your key products are, what benefits you're going to deliver to me, and if I can see that or not. So I think with some by me, I'm going to throw it in. Yeah, why not? Because with that being said, I feel like they still are catering to a little bit of a younger demographic. So that young working woman and not too much into the aging category. Um, for example, I recently have been testing out their snail mucin line and their Yuja, Yuja? Yuja niacin line, and the formulations are very lightweight. So it's definitely catering more so to early aging skin. So people that don't need those heavy, heavy creams yet, but they still need ingredients that are going to help prevent the signs of aging without clogging the pores. So very lightweight formulas that are still heavy in those ingredients that we want and need to stop the signs of aging. You're not stop, but slow them down um, with functional skincare. So I'm really excited about this brand. I feel like it needs a little more a little more attention in the global market. I feel like it deserves it, especially if in, you're in your early 20s, late teens, or even your mid, mid 20s, late 20s, and love layering lighter weight products without that heaviness. It's really an interesting brand. The next one on the list is a little bit of an oldie. This is Benton Skincare Benton Cosmetics. And for me, we're gonna put that in It's Okay. Benton was super viral, like we're talking seven years ago when Korean skincare really hit the global market. And reason being is because they came out with their snail mucin line, which went viral in the acne fighting Korean skincare community, both on the global and Korean market. And they really became really successful from that singular line or snail mucin line because it really helped with people who are suffering from acne but wanted to be in the Korean skincare industry and they just never really grew up from that phase I feel like like they've kind of been coming out with more products but they're just not they're not really delivering it and I want them to deliver it more. I want them to have a stronger branding story. I want them to push more on the influencer marketing so they can build themselves better, but I feel like they're just kind of playing level on that hype that they used to have and not really going beyond that. It's it's almost a little bit sad to see, but at the same time, I'm not excited about their brand anymore. I'm not excited about any of their new products and I feel like it's because they're not they're not stepping away from that hype from that that one line that they came out with seven years ago. So if you're into exploring some of the older goodies that really revolutionized the Korean skincare market on a global scale, definitely check out Benton, especially for their snail mucin lines. But beyond that, I feel like they just aren't making me excited about the skincare line, but they're still a really great brand and really great products. Next on the list, we have Skin Foods. This is another Korean road shop brand that used to be super, super popular at the same age of like a Tude House and Tony Molly and Misho. Like we're talking back seven years ago where those brands were really like the all-stars in the global Korean skincare market because there weren't any other brands catering to the Western industry yet. And a lot of people were using skin food back then because they were really food focused. So it wasn't like Tony Molly where it revolved around fruits, but skin food kind of focused more on vegetables, vegetable extracts and plant extracts and kind of, kind of luxuriating the image behind them, but in a really affordable, cost-effective way. And the brands back then never really spoke to me, but there was 
There was a few products from them, specifically their brown sugar line and their propolis line and their cleansing oils that I really, really loved. But a lot of their vegetable-based products, like I remember they had a cucumber line and I just, just was like a no for me. But their, their richer, more anti-aging and cleansing products really did it for me. So with that being said, skin food gets put into an it's okay because I feel like they're a hit and miss for me and I really need to kind of hunt for a product that would work for me but otherwise their formulations are lovely and real pleasure to use and that price point is excellent. Then next brand that we have on the list is one that really just like a lot of people are probably going to hate me about this especially because it's so like renowned and that is Sulwasu and I just something about Sulwasu kind of irks me it's so unbelievably overpriced for for what reason because it's a it's a more traditional Korean skincare line and it, it's marketed to more older Korean women but at the same time their ingredients and formulations are very streamlined to what you can get in other Korean skincare products at a fraction of the cost and you're really praying you're really paying a crazy high price point for for things you can get from other brands you know and I just, I like, I want to love Sulwasu. I want to try Sulwasu, but I don't because that price point, I can't, I can't review a product if I personally wouldn't purchase it myself because of the price point. Like, and that's why I feel like I don't personally review a lot of luxury, luxury, luxury brand products because I would feel bad recommending such expensive skincare to my audience because it's not it's not a price point we can justify it let's be honest are we going to spend 150 dollars on one cream like 1.5 fluid ounces no no i'm not so i won't i don't want to recommend stuff like that to you guys and um for that like we're gonna say yeah why not because i I know it's a great brand and so many people swear by Sulwasu once they start using it, but that price point's a real turnoff for me. Um, but if I did get it, I would probably use it, sure. Next we have the face shop. And for me, the face shop was very similar to skin food. And to be precise, the face shop, in my opinion, was always the skin food, but leveled up. So a very similar branding concept while they're using vegetables, plant extracts, natural ingredients, but they always, I felt like the face shop catered to a more older demographic, but still with the price point similar of skin food. So it was almost like you were growing up out of the skin food and branching off into more advanced skincare that's going to target more dry skin, people with more concerns about aging um, without paying out your wallet for it too much and I've actually loved a lot of the face shop brands I think one of their recent ones that I loved over the past two years was their Dr. Belmore Belmore line and their Sika line it was just so lovely and then they have a real a real line for cleansing oils and they I remember I used the lavender one and it was beautiful but for some reason I don't find myself purchasing their products that much so we're going to say, yeah, why not? Because if I own it, I'm going to use it. And if I get gifted it, I'm going to use it because it's a really good brand. But I'm not, it's not a number one brand for me that I'm going to look to purchase if I'm running out of something. It's kind of like my backup line. If I can't get so, such and such product at a convenient time frame and I need something now, I'm kind of going to go with the face shop. Next brand on the list is April Skin and this one is interesting to me because they really I feel like they launched on a global scale about four to five years ago and they originally came out with makeup so I, it's always interesting to see these cosmetic brands branch into and or almost transform into skincare brands and with April Skin they first got kind of viral and well known over their cushion foundation that was extreme full coverage without looking cakey or heavy or like you were wearing a white mask over your face and then they just came out with like these skincare products that I was super skeptical to try out because 
I really didn't like the April Skin Cushion Foundations. They're way too heavy. They had this really perfumey fragrance that just sketched me out and I never really understood why people were so trusting of the brand and so into the brand. But then I tried several of their skincare products and they were actually quite good. They were actually really good and a real pleasure to use with no irritation. So with that, I'm gonna put April Skin in It's Okay because I'm always going to have that image of them being a very heavy makeup foundation line. And I'm always going to have a hint of skepticism when it comes to their skincare products. Even though they've proven to be quite good with each new product launch they come out with, I always enjoy their product. But something about it doesn't scream me. And I feel like they still cater to more of that teenage audience. So if you're looking to step into the world of Korean skincare and you kind of want to level yourself up from a brand such as Claire's and you want to get a little more diversity in your formulations, April Skin would be an interesting one to experiment with, especially if you're younger and don't need those heavy anti-aging ingredients in your skincare. And the final brand that we have on the list is 23 years old and if you guys don't know 23 years old i don't know why they aren't so viral yet i've been hyping this brand for like a decade 23 years old is a very a very ingredient driven brand that focuses heavily on their formulations which i love they're always launching like these super interesting ingredient fo focused products that work stunningly and amazingly and you can find them in stores in south korea like all of young which are some major chain drugstore brands and you can also get them overseas but for some reason no one's really falling in love with them and one of their all-time best products I love is their Beta Castle Cream, which is a heavy AHA cream for the skin. And if you're looking for overnight skin transformation from an exfoliating cream, this is going to do it for you without without extremely damaging your skin. Like they just formulate it so beautifully that you get this gorgeous glow the next day. Your skin is so, so, so soft. Your dark spots almost fade within a couple days of use. And honestly, like Whenever I get a friend hooked on their Beta Castle cream, I get so excited about it because it really is a brand and a product specifically that deserves more love. I'm going to label it as Yeah Why Not because they really need to stop discontinuing products and I think that's one of their biggest downfalls as a brand is that they, they regularly launch these exciting sounding products that they discontinue like half a year or a few months later and it makes it really hard as an influencer to suggest these products because then they come back at you and say oh we actually discontinued that and i'm like well, didn't you just launch this half a year ago like what and i feel like that's kind of their own self-inflicted downfall and i really wish that they would try a little harder to you know come out with products that they they believe in and stand by and don't give up on so fast due to like a short-term like lack of success you know kind of becoming successful in his brand is growth and it it requires a lot more effort put into it so for that they get a yeah why not anyway you guys that is it that is my list of categorizing the best korean skincare brands to the worst korean skincare brands and as you can see i obviously have a little bit of a hard time labeling things as the best and the worst because honestly korean skincare brands are so competitive there are so many good ones out there and it's really just kind of trial and error and finding the brand that you love the most and you can tell for me i really just overall love claire's coaster x innisfree and vt cosmetics right now but there definitely was a time where I was more so obsessed with the face shop or 23 years old, you know? So if you guys are interested in doing this video, please also take a shot at it. I think this is a fun trend to kind of challenge other people to do to categorize your best from worst Korean skincare brands. It was fun. It's definitely interesting to compare brands and see what everyone's thoughts are on them. So if you agree to any of my placements, let me know in the comment section down below. Or if you disagree, let me know. I'd be so curious to hear your guys' opinions on brands and why you disagree with me and why you don't disagree with me. 
Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Please remember to subscribe to my channel. I upload weekly and sometimes more on this channel about skincare related stuff, sometimes makeup tutorials, hair tutorials, DIY beauty hacks and tricks to doing your own beauty treatments at home. And also we do fashion styling try on haul videos here, even though I haven't done one in a while because I've been trying to be really good and not buy fashion over the past year. Um, so yeah, but anyway, I love fashion too. Catch me on my Instagram account where you'll find me uploading things that you're not gonna see here on YouTube, such as my day-to-day -day life and what I'm getting up to alive and also aesthetic kind of content and a short little mini videos. With that being said, I also have a vlogging channel where I upload weekly vlogs of my life and what I'm getting up to as I live in Toronto, Canada. And you can also catch my older life in Korea vlogs there as I lived in South Korea for two years. And you can also catch my old Japan vlogs when I lived in Tokyo, Japan for a year and my Melbourne, Australia vlogs when I lived in Melbourne, Australia. Literally, it's like a documentary of my life. So you can catch that kind of content on my vlog channel. All my other social media accounts are always linked in the description box down below. So catch me on there. I also do custom skincare routines so if you guys are struggling to build a skincare routine or you don't know where to start and need some help and advice I can actually do that for you so check out the link to that service in the description box down below and you can find out more on how you can get help doing that from me otherwise thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video bye